on average, how much do you pay for a haircut to shut it up? What's tip? 50, 60. 100. Okay, so north of 40, north of 40, north of 50. Has that price been going up as you've lived or going down? Same. Same. Up? Great. How often, shout it out, do you get a haircut? Four weeks. Two months. Two months. Three months. Five weeks. Five weeks. Okay, so somewhat often. Cool. Um, what I'll go through here. Um, so for, for men, um, getting a haircut is problematic. It takes a lot of time. We have to make an appointment. Then we have to sit because usually somebody's taking more time um, and we're just wasting their time. Uh, it requires going to the one barber that knows our style. I believe everyone is like this. We have to try out different barbers when we move to a new place and then we have to find out which one is the best. And this gets problematic when we're traveling and we don't, um, we can't get to our one barber. Um, and it, it's expensive, we just talked about that. And lastly, some men don't want a free therapy session and a lot of barbers like giving one. So um, there's, I'm coming up with a solution to build a robot that trims hair starting with beards. Now why beards? Uh, beards are an easier technical problem to solve. Uh, if you mess up someone's beard, they'll, well, they won't like you, but they won't hate you. You can, you can recover back from that problem by just giving them a trimmer to finish up themselves. Um, and uh, lastly, it's something, and this is critical, something people will still pay for. Most men shave their beards at home, but some go into a barber and they'll still pay for it. Um, there's a lot of benefits to that. Mostly it's about being faster, being more predictable, being cheaper and not having it talk to you. I'm envisioning a future, whether you're in Queens, uh, New York, or Taipei, Taiwan, you swipe your card at a stool in a kiosk and you get your hair done regardless of where you are faster and cheaper than you get it done by a human today. Um, go to market, um, do you mind scrolling up, Brandon, just a tiny bit? Um, go to market, this is um, a playbook that Redbox and Cafe X um, are employing. Uh, they're renting out kiosk retail space at airports, malls, um, and WeWorks, and they're, they're basically paying a landlord to secure some space, and uh, anybody who comes in can use that kiosk. Uh, I'm proud to say just last week, I got an LOI, a, a verbal agreement for an LOI from the Richmond Business Hub. This is the Richmond and East Bay. It's a 10,000 square foot um, complex and they're on board to, to, to host one of these machines. Uh, market size, so men's grooming as a whole is a $20 billion industry. Now a lot of that is products um, and, it's, and it's slated to grow to 26 billion by next year. Um, Fun fact, not a lot of people know this, but barbering is the fastest growing profession in the US, fastest. Uh, there's been about a 10% growth year over year. The main incumbent, so Regis Corp, which um, is the parent of Supercuts um, and Great Clips, they do each about one and a half billion a year, and they've been growing at a clip every year, including the recession. In fact, Great Clips, which um, goes uh, has a 70% male clientele, and targets kind of the basic cut, their revenue spikes during the recession. Competitors, um, if you are going in for a high quality haircut, buzz bot is not for you. If you're going in for an experience like sports, club, uh, sports clips offer where you drink a beer, watch the game where you're getting a haircut, this isn't for you. Um, there are DIY solutions, if anybody remembers the flow beat from the 80s, yeah. like a vacuum plus a uh, trimmer, you can do that. Uh, Panasonic has invested some R&D work in hair washing robots. Uh, nothing has gone into production though. So why now? Why, why does it make sense to do this venture now? Uh, the cost of mechanical arm has been plummeting. That is $10,000 assembled by the kit. Um, there are a host of uh, startups out there that are making robotic arms that are getting cheaper and cheaper. Um, plus, the depth sensing cameras are a lot more available. Um, there's a lot, of, a lot of advances in self-driving tech and facial recognition that can be repurposed for this venture. Um, I had mentioned before, bar barbering is growing because of changing male fashion trends. A lot more men are caring about their hair now. And lastly, and this is huge, especially in this city, we're gonna see consumer-facing robots soon. Cafe X, uh, does anybody, everybody know what Cafe X is? It's a robot that serves you coffee. Go to the Metreon if you want to see it. They are normalizing 
the behavior of putting robots in front of people. That's really, really huge because robots have traditionally sat in warehouses and factories. This is a trend that can be piggybacked off of. Uh, the roadmap, um, I'm building a prototype that's in progress um, to trim beards and securing more LOIs um, from landlords. Um, then raising money to productionize that robot. And then lastly, distributing it to the same places I talked about earlier. Uh, why me? So um, I studied computer engineering and majored in embedded systems at those two places. Um, if you can scroll down, Brandon. Um, I built chips that go in phones at Broadcom. I built radios for our troops um, uh, in the field. I worked at Morgan Stanley um, on the software side doing more, more big data work. And um, I worked for this guy, so I have a lot of experience shipping software at the highest level. Um, and lastly, I run two communities that are, um, one is 5,000, one is 3,000 people. I have access to a lot of engineers. And so once I, have, once I raise that money, I have direct channels to go to, to, raise, um, to, to recruit engineers to build this venture up. Um, the, the one thing I could really use everybody's help with are introductions to people who work at WeWorks, malls, airports, people who are in charge of that retail kiosk space to get them to sign non-binding LOIs. It's not even binding at this point. That would be really helpful to me. Thank you.